So that way y'all ain't got to come back. All right. First question. Wait a minute. Got five or six to go over. And the first question is twelve point two twenty seven. 27, 12.2, 27 slash. Oh, yeah. Hmm? I don't look at the names. I just, I just clicked on them. I'm sorry. Okay, this one already has. I'm going to do another one. Okay, it's not letting me do another one. Okay. I thought it would give you another one. Well, since I'm not doing the homework, let me just click on it again and I'll clear the uh, number six online. 12.2 number six online. All right. First of all, I'm just going to just ignore that over there, uh, except for the first line. And write this down if you haven't done the homework yet, which you should have already done this, but write the, you might want to write those down. That's a lot. Let's see. Okay, they've got the, so basically, okay, we don't have to write all this down. We just got to write the numbers down. Now, the good thing about this, if you've got an Excel spreadsheet, is you can hit that button right there, this little button, and it'll click it into Excel. And then all you got to do is open it. There it is. And that way you don't have to do anything. Now you can put it in order. Is it already in order? It's already in order. Okay. Now the first one, the first class, let me go back to the first class, is 18 to 24. 18 to 24. So I'm going to put 18 right there. Well, I thought I was. 18. Okay, let's see. 18 to 24. Now, with it, when you cross it, when you're talking horizontal, the, the, the class width, you have to count 18 and you have to count 24. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So the class width is what? Seven. So what's 18 plus seven? Take 18 plus seven. Copy that down. How far do we got to go down to? 63 something? And then here equals this number plus 7. Copy that down. And that should be your. Okay, let's try that again. Equals this number plus 7. I must not have hit seven. There. And that should be your class or your classes. These are your lower class limits. These are your what? Upper class limits. Remember, the most important one to get is your class width. And you can either get it vertically or, by, or uh, horizontally. They, they didn't give you a choice here. You had to do it horizontally. And when you do it horizontally, you have to count that number and you have to count that number. You can't say 
24 minus 18 is 6. You can't do that. You have to count that number and that number when you do the class width horizontally. If you do it vertically, you'd say 25 minus 18. Everybody with me? Now you just count. Well, 18 to 24. 18 to 24. Be right there. We'll color them that color. So 18 to 24 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 25 to 31. We'll color that that color. Oops. And that's how many? Five. 32 to 38. 32 to 38. One. 46 to 52, none. 53 to 59, none. And 61, 60 to 66, one. So you can see that most of your data is on this side instead of it being a normal curve. So you're, lead, you're leaning whatever we're doing it's leaning heavily on the left, so that means this is, because this is a center, it's leaning on the left, so this is what you call skewed right. So you need to write that down. It's, all your data is on the left, so that means that it's skewed right. What is 12.2? 12. 12.2. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Now, what is this talking about? Let's go back to the question so you can make sense of the question. The question says, done. The question says the table shows sales of 15 top selling colors and chassis for the company and thousands of vehicles. Okay, so let's go back to our data. So it looks like right here, the green and the got red, black, orange, green, blue, white, green, black, white, blue, yellow. And then these, orange, black, and green. You have a work email. So it looks like to me that Looks well, like to me that these are the more popular colors, of course, because you've got it on this side right here. That's what it looks like. This is skewed right. It's always the opposite. Mm -hmm. If all your data is on the left, it's skewed left, right. If all your data is on the right, it's skewed left. Okay, does that help you out? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question, 12.2, I guess that's 9, so 20 would be next. And this is 12.4, no, wait a minute, right here, 27, I'm sorry. 27 slash, that was, okay, I'm a little bit confused. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, this is a test question, so might as well go over it. All right, it says the total number of observations. What do you do to find the total? Add all these up. So that'd be 8, that's 13, 21, 27, 33, something like that. Okay, so 33. The class width, 14 minus 6 is 8, or 21 minus 13, or 22 minus 14, 
That's the easiest way to get it. You could say 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You could do it like that, but I usually don't tell people to do that because it's easier to just take 14 minus 6. Midpoint of the second class. That would be 12, I meant 12. 14 plus 21 is 35. And half of 35 is divided by 2 is 17.5. The modal classes, which one has the most? The 8s carry the modal classes, so that would be 30 to 37 and 46 to 53. The class limits of the next class down here. What's 40, huh? What's 46 plus 8? It's 4. So 54, so I'll take my handy dandy mouse. The 54 to plus 53 plus 8. I think. Now that is a test question because I remember putting it on the test. And plus, you don't have to think too much. You don't have to calculate too much. You just have to remember more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one. 12.347 slash number 11. Okay, we haven't covered the quartiles yet, so we'll cover it today. I didn't know it was in there, if you want to know the truth about it, but it's real easy to find it. Um, I was hoping this would be, I'm going to have to put them in the spreadsheet. Uh, I don't know why some of, them, some of them come with it and some of them don't. So let me go down here and I'll just put them right here. All right, 220, 330, 4.20, 5.30, 6.20, 7.30, 8.30, 6.60, 7.40, 7.68.60. I hope I got them all down there. Just ignore that. All right, so the first thing I do is put them what? Put them in order. Now, this is called a five number summary. Five number summary. It consists of the men, the first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and the match. Now the men and the match y'all should be able to get. Now, the first quartile is also called the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 
and the 75th percentile. The 50th percentile is also called median. And the 25th percentile is called the top half median. Well, that's a hubridism. Top median. And what do you think the 75th percentile is called? The bottom median. So, all you got to do is find the median. Let's count how many we got. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 15, 19, 20, 21. So it's odd, right? Right, Hubert. So go to number 11. Huh? Yeah. Up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 3 is 21. And it's got 21 right Facebook here. Facebook message. I was following your curses. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So go down 10 and mark number 11. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 is the middle. So we'll color that aqua. And that's equal to 530. Now all you got to do is find the median of the top. How many are up top? Well, since this is the middle, you've got to count all the numbers above it, in which that's what? 10. So you, that's an even amount. So you got to find number uh, 4 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These two right here. And since you can't use both of them, what do you got to do? You got to average them. So y'all find the y'all find the 75th percentile. Somebody tell me what numbers is going to be the 75th percentile. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. So that's equal to parentheses 730 plus 680 divided by 2. And there it is. And that's how you find the five number summary. Now, some books and some teachers use formulas to get these, the five number summary. I have found that it's easier just to teach students to find the median of the top half and the median of the bottom half. Yeah, I tried to include a switch layer that had on like, you know, the solve this and Now, what if you've got an even amount? Go down here and I'm going to give you 10 numbers. 20, 21, 21, 22, 23, 25, 25, 30, 32, 35, 36, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Take off the 20. There we go. Now do those numbers and find because it's going to be a little bit different. With an even amount, you got to find the median. How do you find the median of the even amount? You find the two middle numbers and average them, and then that'll leave something. It'll leave something that you're going to have to think about.
All right, 10. So that means we've got to find these two right here. And since they're the same, but we're going to just go ahead and do the formula. That's going to be this guy plus this guy divided by what? 2. Now, where is that number? Well, that number, I'm going to take a blue dot. That number is in between those two numbers right there. Okay? Now, just because it's the same, I wish I hadn't made it the same. It wouldn't. That, that, that dot's not right. Hold on a minute. That dot's too big. Oh, I can't do that. Sorry. I got to go over here and do it. There we go. All right. That dot, I mean, this, that's where that 25 is right there. That number right there, that 25 that's right there, that was right there, it's right there. I'm just going to put 25. I ain't got time to do it again. 25. That 25, because if this was a 26, that would be 25.5. And that 20, that number is right there. So how many numbers you got up top? One, two, three, four, five. So then you just get there. And that's the difference between the two type problems. You got to be careful. So you don't have to average on, on the top and the bottom this time. So I'm going to mark that one. Green. Green. And that's equal to that number. And then since that dot is right there, one, two, three, four, five. So that would be your other one. You've got to be careful. So you need to make a note because that will get you on a test. I don't remember seeing one of these on the test because I, I didn't know y'all had to go over the quartiles. So I, don't, I, doubt, I doubt they're on your test. But if you go into Math 120 or Math 103, that's on your first test. So there it is. Does that help? It's a whole lot easier to see it than it is to do a formula. So that's why I don't take the formula. Yeah, I think. Hold on. Did I hit? I hope I hit recording. Yeah. All righty. Oh, we didn't check to see if we got the right answer. Okay, you, there's the right answer right there. Okay. All right, the next one, 12.4, 20 slash 4. So this is number 4 on your homework. This is a test question because I remember seeing this one. Okay, I'm going to... Well, first thing, I don't even know what they're asking. I'm going to go to the spreadsheet, and I'm going to just do everything, and then we'll see what they're asking. So 13, 17, 16, 19, and 15. First thing I'm going to do is put them in order. This thing's getting on my nerves. Data. Okay, and I'm just going to go with this mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, and standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is probably going to be another question because when I was picking out questions for the test, I noticed that the uh, variance and standard deviation was on another type question, but I'm just going to do them because it's killing two birds with one stone. So the mean, the mean is equal to the summation of all your numbers divided by how many numbers you got. That's five. Uh, that's that. The median is equal to the middle number since we have a odd amount. 
is try to color that so it would stick with you. Mode, there isn't one, so you put none, non-applicable, does not exist, ain't none, ain't there, whatever you want to put, but do not put what? Do not put zero. Range, the mid-range is equal to the highest plus the lowest divided by two. The variance, this is x. What do you got to do first? x minus what? x bar. So I've got to take this number and subtract the mean from each one. And then what do I need to do with x minus x bar? Raise it to the what? Square it. And then add them together. And then add them up. And take that number and divide it by what? N minus what? One, which would be four. And then take the square root of that, which raise it to the half power. And that's the standard deviation. Now let's see what they're asking, because I have no idea what they're asking for. The mean, let me make this get small right quick. Our mean is 16, and the standard deviation is 2.24. Add 20 to each of the numbers. So 20 plus 13 is what? Oops. Yep. 15 plus 20 is 35. 16 plus 36, 37 and 39 and our new mean is what 36 standard deviation is 2.24 again subtract 10 from each 23 25 26 27 29 still the same mean standard deviation or I'm sorry the same standard deviation Six is the right answer. Oh, no, it's not. It's 26. No, you got it right. They got it wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Track 10 from each of the numbers in the original set. Okay, the original set. I didn't read directions. What's 10 from 13? That'd be 3, 7, 6. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Move back up. Okay, 10. Take, say 10 from the original set. So that would be 3. 5, 6, 7, and 9. There. The mean is 6 and the standard deviation is still 2.23. Why is that? Because the ratio to the numbers is, hasn't changed. The difference between the numbers, if you change all of them, increase them by 20 and decrease them by 10, and decrease them by another 10, the difference between the numbers are still the same. In other words, is the data changing at all? No, because if you now, if you add five to the first two and six to the last two, then it's gonna change. But since you're doing the same ratio each time, it's not gonna change. 
Think of it like this. What's the difference between 50 one hundredths and one half? Nothing. It's 0.5. Okay, so you can add 10 to all those numbers and it's not going to change the standard deviation at all. Yeah, I didn't read the directions. Okay, whatever I just said is the answer. What I don't know what this says. I kind of like these discussion questions because they have educators, administrators that write that do these and you can't you can't read them. If each piece of data is increased or decreased by n, then the mean is increased by n. That is, adding or subtracting fixed data will, will both increase. If each piece of data is increased by the mean, is increased or decreased by n. If each piece of increase, the mean is multiplied or divided. The mean, the mean remains the same. No, it don't remain the same. It goes up and down with it. So I think it would be That's not right. C and D are not right. I'm trying to see the difference between A and B. If each piece of data is increased or decreased by N, then the mean is increased. I think it's B. The reason, what's wrong with A? It says if each piece of data is increased or decreased, the mean is increased. It doesn't say or decreased. It just says increased. That's that's the difference between these two. Draw a conclusion about the change of the standard deviation. There is no change. I say D. Okay, I hope I didn't put this on test. This is too much. See, there's that. I think that's what. It, yeah, that was more. How will the mean and standard deviation? Oh, so they give you another set of numbers, or they don't? Okay. How does it differ from the deviation of the, of the bond? I was confused. No, they're just gonna. They're just asking you the same thing they asked you up here. They want you to find the mean of nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 to 15, and then add, all you got to do is add 500 to it to the mean. See what they're doing? They're adding 500. So the so the mean is going to be 500 and something, whatever your mean is. Let's put it in. How many do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only got so let's just do it over. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that it? Okay, let's find the mean. Mean, median, mode, range, range, variance, standard deviation. Mean is going to be equal to all these guys divided by how many was there? Seven? Median is going to be equal to middle. Mode, I don't really care about. There's not one. Range is equal to this guy minus this guy. And mid range is equal to this guy plus this guy divided by two. 
variance equals this guy minus the mean. Square it. Add it up. And that's equal to this guy divided by 6, which is n minus 1. And then this guy raised to the 0.5 power. What'd you say? Yep. All right, write down that mean. Write down the mean at 12 and the standard deviation of 2.16. Twelve point zero zero, and the standard deviation is two point one six. Now, what is the from what we learned with the first part? What is the mean for the five hundred set going to be? At five twelve, at five hundred to twelve, what do you get? Add 500 to 12, what do you get? 512. And the standard deviation is what? That should be correct. Oh, I'm sorry. So you got to add, I'm sorry, add uh, 522 then. Is that right? What they're trying to get you to see is the relationship between the numbers depicts the relationship between the two means. And the standard deviations are going to be the same if these numbers are all increased by the same number. If they're increased by different numbers, then that will work. You'll have to recalculate. Okay, we good? Okay. That's all the questions. That's all the homework questions. Now, that takes care pretty much of chapter 12. Chapter 11 goes over a few things. Chapter 11 goes over probability, and we're only going to do a few things of probability, not, not a lot. So two sections, 11.1 and 11.2. 11.1 covers the basics of probability. What is probability? Probability. All of you have gotten behind a slow car on a two-lane highway. And when you get to the end of the highway, you're going to turn left. And you say to yourself, that person in front of me is going to turn left. And she does. Now, what have you just done? Have you predicted the future? Yes, you have. Nobody can predict the future. If they do, the only thing you have to ask me is one thing. What's that? Anybody know? What's the, lottery? What's the lottery numbers for the Georgia lottery or the Powerball lottery? I don't know. Nobody can predict. Nobody can predict the future. Nobody can predict the future. Okay, nobody can predict the future, but by, let me finish, by mathematics, by math, by observation, research, and by interpretation, and I don't know how to spell interpretation. We can assign 
a prefix to a guess. I mean, sign a number to a prediction. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead. Start to move this around again. And that number is going to be a decimal between zero and one. One. Zero being not a chance, one being very likely. What? Where? Yeah. Now, let's talk about your Simpsons episodes. There's a lot of Star Trek said that we were going to be carrying around communicators back in the 60s. And that's come true. Now, there are some things that come true, but if I was to ask you, can you tell me what the lottery numbers are for the Powerball lottery? Can you tell what the lottery numbers are? No. Then you wouldn't be in this classroom. You would be rich. Because what would you do every time there was a lottery? No, actually, you would win every once in a while. You wouldn't win every single time. Or you would pay somebody to go buy the tickets. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't play it every single time. Or you'd go to Las Vegas a couple of times and play the horses, play the football games. That's what you would do. Or you'd do like back in the future, what, two or three? When did he go back and get the almanac? I can't remember. I think that was two. He went back and got the sports almanac for the next 50 years. And he took it back to the 1980s. He was going to make a million dollars. Instead, Biff got it and made a million dollars. Okay, so, and what happened to Miss Chloe, or what was her name? She got on TV and said, I can sell oh, yeah. your futures for five ninety nine dollars a minute. Yeah. They busted her because she was a fraud. If anybody ever tells you they can tell the future, I even, I got a friend. No. This person lives their life or plans their life by somebody that says they can interpret dreams. Yeah. And I haven't got the heart to tell this person that, that this person is a dumbass. The person that's interpreting the dreams I not even graduated high school. And she's telling this person that what her dreams mean and what the dreams, what she needs to do and all this. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> no, if you think about it, it's kind of like you loaning yourself money and paying yourself. Because what is dreams? It's your brain letting loose. Okay? Who's in charge of your brain? You are. So you make your own dreams. The whole point is you don't tell somebody what their dreams mean and then they go out and do what you tell them to. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so what we're doing is we're saying, now how could you tell that that woman was going to turn left? Well, you've gotten behind how many of those cars? Experience. You've gotten behind those cars, and most of the time, if you're taking a cut through road, that person's not going to turn the opposite direction you're going because you're using that cut road for what? A reason. You're not going to take a cut through road 
to go back to where you were going. So naturally, if both of you are on that road, you're probably going to the same place because you're not going to turn right to go back. You're going to turn left when you get to the end of the road and go to where it's short. So most of, most of the time, if you can predict something, chances are it's either experience or it's pretty much common sense, okay? Just like when we get up cows. I'll give you another prime example. And Walt was not on his phone. He would attest to this. When we get up cows, there's a big pasture, and then there's a smaller pasture, and then there's a holding bee. And then that's where we get, that's where we want the cows to go. And we got several other pastures, you know, around. The smaller the pasture, the easier it is to get them into the holding bee. Unless you got them a trick like our cows, we feed our cows all the time, so they come running whenever we go out in the pasture. So we got them trained. But with crazy cows, if you got all the cows right here in one of the pastures, then what you want to do is take them to the smaller pastures and take them to the holding bee. Well, let's say this is like 50 acres and this is like 10 acres or whatever. It's a big pasture, and you finally get them to go through. This gate, this gate right here is open, okay? It's open and they go through that gate. But you have forgotten that this gate right here is wide open and the gate right here is going into the, the holding pen. It's wide open. So you got two gates that are wide open and you see it right when they go into the, right when they go into this gate right here, you see that this gate is open right here. Okay, they got two shots. They can go to this gate or they can go to this gate. Which one they gonna go to? They gonna go straight, and I can tell you they're gonna go straight for that. Why? Because that's not where you want them to go. Okay? It's just like the little old lady. Now, I don't know the common sense behind that, only that they know when they're getting up, and they know they're going to get their head clamped and get a shot and all that, and they know not to go to the holding pit. All right? But I don't know of any generalization about, you know, like the shortcut road, and you're not going to go back to Fort Anderson, you're going to go to the left for a penalty. You know? I don't know, but every single time we get cows up, and as soon as we get them here, if we see that there's a gate open, it's like they know. Just just as soon as they get through here, they don't even think. They just they go right forward. They, 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 that's like they know. Another prediction, experience. You can put a prediction of point, I'm about 0.8% sure that those cows are going to go for the second gate. It's a, like I said, it's a prediction. And, and you can think of some that you've done over time that you can predict. But I like to use the little old lady in the car because that's happened to all of us. Or what about when you're in a hurry? You can predict, or when you need to write an email on your phone or a text on your phone, and it's very important. Or you've got a bunch of food in your lap and you want to eat, every red light in Anderson will be green for you when you when you want to do that. How many how many times have you done something like that? Like yeah, everything's red. And when you've got to get to class in five minutes, you get every freaking red light in Anderson County and you think they put up an extra one for you. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's a predictor because you know that it's been but anyway. What is probability? Probability, there's two types. There's the, I like to call it the, uh, the Mayberry probability or the theoretical probability. And then there's the physical probability. Okay. The 
may vary or theoretical probability is if I'm going to flip a coin, what is the probability that it's going to be tails? Well, 50 50. You got a one and a half, you got a one half chance that it's going to be tails. Well, what's the probability of rolling a six on a die? Well, that be one out of six. The number of times one over the number of times possible. Now, how many tails do you have on the coin? One. And what's the possibility of the, 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 the coin to land on one side or the other side? That's two sides. How many sides are on a die? Six. Now, what I also like to call these is the mathematical. The mathematical probability. Do we have a die in our hand right now? And how do we know we can't even roll? Well, actually, I do. But we've only got 30 minutes to do this. If we don't finish, we'll come back. If you have to come back, I don't think, I think you don't have to come back because I'm not going to be able to finish today. Anyway, that's that. Well, we don't have a die. We don't have a card. We don't have the probability of, of getting a king in a deck of cards is four out of 52. I don't even have a deck of cards. What are you basing it on? You're basing it all on mathematics. You're basing it on the deck of cards. What's in the deck of cards? You're basing it on the die. What's on the die? And you're basing it on the coin. What's on the coin? Then what's the physical probability? Well, the physical probability is what you actually try. What you're actually going to do when y'all come back with you. I'm going to give you a deck of cards. I'm going to give you a die. And you're going to do about 10 hands and 10 rolls. And it is what you actually try or observe or collect. Just say observe or collect. If you go outside and you go to the gate out here, the only way that you can go out, you walk this gate over here, and the only way you can get out of this parking lot is over there, and you count the number of white cars, white vehicles in the parking lot. That is an actual a physical probability, or that's statistics. But you're basing your probability on physical doing versus a mathematical count at the going go to local new car dealers and ask them how many white cars that they sell. These two will never equal. Why not? Well, there's a thing called the big number theory. The law of large numbers. The more numbers that you try the closest this probability will get to this probability. There was a couple of guys at MIT one semester, and they built a computer program, or they designed a computer program, an algorithm. They took, a, they took like five rolls of quarters, and they measured each quarter. And when I say measure, I'm not talking about with a, talking about with a micrometer. They measured each one of the quarters, they weighed each one of the quarters to like the hundred thousandth of a grain. They took infrared scans of each quarter and they put all this information into and got an average for one quarter out of 10 rolls of quarters. Well, how many is 10 rolls of quarters? That's 400 quarters, isn't it? Yes. I think so, something like that. Okay, so that's 400 quarters. So one, they took one quarter and made an imaginary quarter put in the computer that was so that was an average of all the weights, all the configurations, all the balance. They they balanced and they checked to see how many of them were balanced and how much they were off on this side and how much they were. They did all kinds of analyzation of these quarters, four hundred quarters. They put all that information into a computer program and put in an algorithm that would generate the number of flips it would take to get this 
You don't have meaning? So 100,000 flips by the computer to get the probability of tails to come out to be 50%. Now, how does that play into statistics? Well, let's say you're an executive with Michelin. You're up there in the Crystal Palace up there on 85. You don't know where that is? Past, past Greenville on the left, where California's Dreaming used to be or still is. I don't know if it's still there or not. But anyway, you get five or six figures, paycheck. But your job is quality assurance. That makes sure that every tire that comes out of Excuse me. Every tire that comes out of Michelin, Sandy Springs, and Anderson are good. And the budget for Michelin every year is based on all the director's reports. And your report you have to give at the end of the year. Are you going to pick 10 tires from Anderson and 10 tires from Michelin? Or are you going to pick a thousand tires from Anderson and a thousand tires from Michigan? Which one are you going to pick? You're going to pick a thousand. Why? Because the more numbers you use when you do statistics, the better the predictor. And if you're going into a, a report to the president or a report to the CEO or whatever, and you go in there with lazy attitude disorder, and you give them a number that's not worth a crap, and they base next year's budget on your numbers, guess what happens after next year? You're going to get fired. Because you're talking about millions of dollars based on, oh, yeah, there's going to be, by my, by my report, I'd say that Anderson will put out 30% uh, bad tires, and Sandy Springs will put out 15% bad tires. And you're basing that on 10 tires that you pulled and 10 tires that you pulled when you should have pulled a thousand to find out that Sandy Springs is only 5% and I mean Anderson's only 5% and Sandy Springs is 7% and all that money was wasted on quality assurance based on your 15% and 20%. Never ever if you're ever in a position where you have to give some kind of statistical report, do not scream up on the numbers. Always go more than what you're supposed to. Because the more numbers you do, the closer the physical probability will be to the theoretical probability. Yeah. And you always want to try to hit the theoretical probability. Always. Okay? So. The main thing about either one of the probabilities is you've got, and this is one of my weaknesses, you've got to read. Okay? The math is not very hard in this, these two sections. But the problem is you've got to read the question. Just like if I asked, if I asked you what is the probability of pulling a heart out of a deck of cards. Well, you have to read the question and you have to know that there's 13 hearts in a deck of cards. And you also have to know that there's 52 cards in a deck. So that would be 13 out of 52, which also reduces down to what? One of four. So that is a 25% chance or a 0.25 probability that you're going to pick a heart. And if you think about it, it makes sense because there's four suits. I was going to say, you just do the four mm -hmm. suits. So those are not, they're only, they're not considered in the original deck. Yeah. In the original deck is four suits, 13%. Okay? But if I was to say, what is the probability of picking an even card? Then you would have to actually think, but you have to read the question. And then you would have to say, okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that's 5. And then the face parts are all considered an even part, so that's 3. So that's how many? 8. 8 times 4 is what? So that would be 32 over 52. Now, that's theoretical probability. That's mathematical probability. So if you're doing an observing or an experiment, then you would actually do 10 hands. You would shuffle the deck, have somebody pick, then shuffle, then pick, then shuffle, then pick, then shuffle, then pick. That would be one, two, three, four, and then shuffle and pick. That's five hands that you shuffle and pick, and then you can write down, okay, I got a heart one time out of five. And see, it doesn't match. One out of five is the same as one out of four. But we're going to do it ten times. Five hands, one heart. Five hands, that's, that's an observance. This is a mathematical. And that's the whole point of probability, is to find how close you can get or how far you are from the two. We're not going into adding the additive property and multiplicative property. That's in 120 and 103. This is just basic probability. There's two more things I have to cover. I don't know what time it is, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to get to it. The only other thing I want to cover so you can do the homework is complement. Write it down, compliment. C O M T. Is it I M E N T? I think it's E. I think E is a compliment in math. Look it up. I mean, in the book. I, I can't remember. Okay? The compliment. The compliment is what makes up the whole. So if you've got a probability of getting a heart, what's the complement of getting a heart? probability of not getting the heart. So what's the probability of not getting the heart if the probability of getting the heart is 0.25 and 0 to 1 is your scale? 0.75. That's the complement. What is the complement of 32 out of 52? That's the probability of not getting an even part. Hmm? 20 out of 52. What? Yeah, you, you reduce it. I'm just trying to explain the compliment right now. Yes, you reduce it. But not, I'm not worried about that right now. I just want you to understand what the compliment is. Remember, it's kind of like when I was in junior high school. My mom and daddy gave me a dollar every day for lunch. And lunch was 65 cents, so I would always have 35 cents. To this day, I can add 65 and 35 in my head real quick because of that one instance in my life. But that is a compliment. A compliment of 65 to a dollar is 35. A compliment of 75 to a dollar is 25. So that's what you have to remember. The only difference is that's easy for y'all to remember because of money. But when you have to do the fraction, you got to remember that this is part of the whole. That's the whole. So the whole is going to be on the bottom. And this is the difference. 20 plus 32. 32 were even, but that means that 20 is what? Not. Yeah. Oh. Now that should get you through 11.1. Homework. The only thing we've got to do after that is talk about odds. And we'll do that when y'all come back Wednesday. And I think we'll be through. The test and the final exam is already up. I just did that for anybody that wants to take it after Wednesday. Um, and of course, y'all, Unit 3 is still up. That's the, that's the autopilot. Mm -hmm. It should be up until the final exam, I think. The test is up. All right, y'all have a good day. Try.
I want to turn the sign off.